we get them today? Guten Tag. Oh, we're going to get them. We gonna. We gonna get them. What's up, MFers? This is the last hurrah, the last day, the last time, unfortunately, that I will be going out with Oliver on this trip, anyways, to the Northern Californias. Uh, we are back at Berryessa. Yesterday we had to take off because of wind, of course. Freaking wind. Um, today it's supposed to blow almost as hard, so hopefully it doesn't pick up too much. You can see we're in a pretty protected area and we're gonna be making a semi-long run to get to the fish. Um, this is it. This is the last stop on the PB tour for me to get my, my big old Mondo bass. And we also have some crappie located, some extremely large crappies you guys have seen in the last few videos. Things are ridiculous. So we got some sneaky to catch the crappie on once we get there. And we're definitely gonna be fishing for the crappie a little bit at least because the big bass are in that same area every single year. My man Oliver's been telling us so well. Uh, pretty good storyteller though, so who knows? He can't be trusted basically. He's never caught a big fish in his life. That's a lot. He's caught, you said 40 some over 10 pounds? If you want to count. If you want to count. He said he, he last time he caught 11 pounder, he just dropped it on the deck and was pissed off that it wasn't bigger. So hopefully I catch one of those that makes him mad today. We will freaking see. I don't even know. It's going to be an interesting day. We're going to fish for some bass. We're going to fish for some crappie. And hopefully we can make something happen with giant fish. Let's do it. Okay, time to get started guys. Like I said, well, it was real windy yesterday, so water's a little churned up when it pounds into mud banks like this. So going with a little bit uh, less natural trout pattern. This is, what is this? The kokanee pattern, 210 Defiant. Up here it's a kokanee. Up here it's a kokanee. Here it's probably a gizzard shad. Yeah, it's a, a bluish purple gizzard shad pattern. And Oliver says he's feeling it today, so I'm right there with him. Gotta believe. You know, I almost wonder, I was gonna take my frog off, but if I could pull a big one out of them bushes to come yeah. eat it, because, nice. I mean, not like a f 10, maybe, uh, but. That kind of stuff happens with you, maybe. Yeah. More so like on Clear Lake and the Delta, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I could totally see it happening here. 55 degree water trend, like that. 55? What was it? Uh, almost 60. Think, right? It's not good. Got any toilet paper in here, homie? <laughs> um, there might be dude wipes in that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, hey, I'm just, I'm getting there. We'll see. Yeah, homie, you better drop me off at the back. <laughs> Will do. Yep. One pack. Never use dude wipes. We're out here testing product, dude. Hey. Guys, I got to uh, take a giant dump right now. Shout out to Gerald Swindle. Shout out to Gerald Swindle, Oliver, and to Oliver. Mostly shout out to Oliver for uh, <laughs> the one dude wipe we have in here. We're gonna get a good test on it. Gonna go up in this valley and uh, we're gonna get her done. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll just, uh, I'll meet you down the way if you wanna keep going. Um, Unless you wanna sit here and watch me take a dump. I don't I'm think. Sounds great. See you in a couple hours. I'll try not to step in any cow shit too. I'll find a secret spot up here. I'd give him a solid eight out of 10. I'm like a billy goat or something. No betters right here. I don't see anything. I heard a cow moo up there and that sped up the process substantially. I don't think that they're like pissed off at us. But those ones were aggressive and shit the other day. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. I'm back! All right, now I'm ready. I released the tension. Run it. Oh. You want to stay focused? Stay focused. Get whack. Yeah me up my freaking heart just stopped homie
Net, net. Sorry. Uh, so one of my clients last week hooked one right here on this point on the very first cast on the P10. Gotcha. Holy shit, dude! Water's 59 here. Really? Check that out. That's a fucking giant. Is what Whatever that is. The that thing is. It's gonna go down now. That's Spin the it. Biggest mark I've seen. One more right. There he is. He's still behind it. He's just not interested. That's, that's a f tank, bro. That's a ten. That's uh, minimum. Let's soak this point a little bit. This should be on the bush. Oh yeah, front side of the bush. Oh, here it comes. You better catch that one. Oh. Drop it. Bunny. Front side of the tree. We will catch a fish today. Oh yeah. He's pretty hot. Yep. <laughs> no! No! Dude, it's a bass, dude. Oh, come on! <laughs> it's totally a bass. No! Uh, no! <laughs> pretty solid little spot. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was cool. That was super neat. That was super cool. I suppose. That's not a bad spot either. Mm -mm. That was pretty rad, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, uh,. Go get my bait now and cry a little. Yeah, look at that. Hmm, that's cool. Watch him on the back side of that bush. That's one that would not have been caught without that shit. Nope. That is, that kind of shit's harder to see. I'm sorry. That's some cool shit. Come on, baby. Come on, be the right time. It's a bit. Oh, yeah. He's coming. <laughs> this way. <laughs> God damn it. Right into the net. This way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a bass. <laughs> wow, you got him pretty good there. I got him with 17 different hook presentations. Check that out, huh? Oh, shit. So much work for this guy right here. He got it pretty good. It wasn't a thump. More of just a uh, pressure bite, but he just like swimming the other way with it. I was like, I'll set the hook now. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it crazy how they just hold on? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Well guys, welcome back to Nebraska. Unfortunately, that is, uh, that's it. That's the end of the, uh, the PB tour, um, obviously, without my new PB. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the trip, kind of some of my thoughts about it. And then I also have, uh, I have the two most successful rigs I want to show you guys that we caught fish on that are a little bit different, I think, um, than what traditionally I throw and maybe a lot of people throw and some stuff Oliver shared with me. That'll help you guys catch some more fish on those since that's what we all want to do, right? So anyways, first off, let's get my get into my sentiments about the trip a little bit. So I went out there, obviously, like I told you guys, wanted to catch my biggest largemouth bass um, of my life. Or smallmouth. There is smallmouth and spotted bass bigger than my 8-pound, 10-ounce largemouth bass. So goal was to catch my biggest bass ever. So when I was planning this trip, I wanted to do something a little bit different. It seems like there's a million freaking videos on YouTube right now. From down in Texas. I've been to Texas several times. I am fully confident in myself that I could at least um, have a sighting of an 8 to 10 pounder, if not bigger, if I went to Texas because I had every time except once before. But I've always wanted to fish some of those Northern California reservoirs and they were freaking beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. I was talking to Oliver, he said if you want to catch a giant, like a mega bass, this is where you need to come. And so I headed out there. Now, unfortunately, as he said and as we found out really, really quick, Everything is behind in Northern California right now. The climate's really not that much different right now than it is here in Nebraska. And so everything was just like days behind, not weeks or months behind, like days behind. And we just happened to miss that bite window. We had some weird cold fronts blowing in. We had super strong winds for three of the days and really cold nighttime temperatures. So it just, it didn't happen. I threw the big swim bait for probably 90% of the time or so throughout the trip. 
I was committed to it. I was going to throw it until I got a big bite. And luckily, I did catch a couple fish on it. So that kind of kept me going. Uh, and I think more and more as I learn with this bait here in the Midwest and in Texas and places that are close for me to travel, I'm going to learn more to be able to take back there and hopefully catch a giant, giant one. So a couple things I want to share as far as tackle go. Um, let's talk about the swim bait setup I was using. I didn't really go too in-depth about that, um, unfortunately, to you guys, but I was super blown away. I'm trying to break stuff here. Blown away by this bait and this rod. This is the new the Melican Fishing, the MF or swim bait rod. Um, that's going to be out later this summer. Unfortunately, I don't have them out yet. Fished it with a 300 size Tranks, and this is 30 pound monofilament. That's what I threw the entire time. That's what Oliver had at this house. I spooled it up, and I really liked how it fished on that. Let's talk about the rod real quick. You know, when we're designing this series of rods, when I'm designing exactly the actions, the tapers, everything I want, um, I want a, a nice balanced rod, I want a light rod, I want a strong, powerful rod. Uh, and I, most importantly, I think more than anything is I want the right proper actions for a variety of different techniques. So you can go buy a rod and you're not just going to be able to use it for one thing. You're going to be able to use it very effectively for a lot of different techniques. So with that in mind, what I wanted with this swim bait rod here, which is a, it's classified as a 7.9 extra heavy. Um, what I wanted though was something that I could throw like six to seven inch weedless swim baits on like braided line. I want to be able to throw Alabama rigs with it. I want to be able to throw fluorocarbon, heavy fluorocarbon and monofilament for top hook swim baits in the uh, one and a half to three ounce range. And I wanted to be able to flip and punch with this thing with braided line, which if you know on the market, there's not a whole lot of rods you can feel comfortable flipping with and be feel comfortable throwing swim baits with because it's usually two different types of tapers. So I got out there and I started throwing this thing and I brought some of my bigger swim bait rods too just in case it couldn't handle them. But this guy right here is the Defiant 210 swim bait. It weighs four ounces. The tip on this rod is excellent and there's enough power throughout the blank that I was lobbing this guy all day and this rod was plenty for it. The two fish that did get this bait all the way, I stuck, got them to the boat, no problem. Super, super jacked about that. Honestly, I think this rod's gonna be able to handle like my Hinkle Shad, my, my Depths 250s, um, five, six ounce baits as well. This one's four, handled it with ease. Um, but it's got enough tip that I feel super confident that I can throw like my seven inch slammers. Um, and I can flip and punch with that. I can throw a rigs. Now, that seven inch slammer, I think, is only about an ounce and a half bait. So I feel totally confident I can do that with this guy. So uh, I'm very excited to have you guys be able to feel use this rod. Love this uh, this full tapered grip right here as well. Real quick, talk about this swim bait, the Defiant swim bait. This is one that Oliver actually designed himself. Um, it's a little, it's an eight and a quarter inch, but it's a nice thin profile, which keeps it at that nice four ounce size. It's not clumsy in the water. It's not overbearing. It's not too hard to throw for a long period of time. Super jacked about that. Um, let's talk about the harness system because that's what really sets this bait apart. As you guys can see, it has these two hooks. So it's got the main hook. This is a line through swim bait, by the way. So it's got the main hook that connects to the main line that goes through the nose. A lot of you guys were asking about this rigging. It's something that's unique. There's no other bait on the market that's like this one exactly. Um, so you got the line through to this, this top jig hook right here, and then you got these little keepers right here, one on the bottom and one on the top that holds that guy on. And then you actually have this little barb that holds this back hook on. So the barb, see if you guys can see that up close, because I haven't seen any real information besides what Oliver's done on this bait for some reason. But that barb right there sticks down into this plastic, and so you can repeatedly do that a ton. I mean, I never got to the point where I couldn't stick it in there anymore. So then you got this big back trailer hook, which is awesome. So when that fish is on there, and when that fish bites, you have two nice medium wire hooks that aren't going to bend out that you can crack them with, uh, and they're going to get bit, and then it's a line through. So just like all line through swim baits, they can't use the leverage of that swim bait with like a fixed hook to throw that bait out of their mouth. And one more thing that's making this bait um, quickly become like my favorite in the 8 inch size category. When this guy is rigged, and we'll put this pin in real quick so I can show you guys. So you just, you tighten it up, you pull it through, and you stick it down just like so. Boom. But when this guy is rigged like it's supposed to be, just like that, you can fish this thing over grass, you can fish it. We're fishing it right through those bushes, casting over the bushes, and powering it through the bush and it wasn't hanging up like exposed hooks and it was more weedless than like a jig or a texas rig is all the times pretty incredible but i'll link both these rigs and everything down below obviously you can't get the rods yet unfortunately but end of summer 
be very soon, members. And then let's talk about this other rig that was an excellent fish catcher that Oliver says he uses with a lot of his clients. You guys can use it at any fishery that you fish around. Basically, it's a Carolina rig with a uh, three or four inches, a four inch mega bass haze dong shaft. This is a three aught owner J hook. Um, length of leader, I mean, Oliver was tying a really, really long leader for it sometimes. This is about a two and a half foot leader, I think, anywhere from two to five feet you can get away with. Little tiny itty bitty swivel right here. This is a barrel weight. Uh, he was using like a little mojo weight, like a long one inch mojo, super long and narrow. 3 16ths, he says his favorite size, and then uh, a couple feet of fluorocarbon right onto the main line of braid, 15 pound braid or whatever. And um, throw this deep, throw it shallow, throw it in bushes, throw it wherever. It was flat out getting more bites than anything else we threw. Anyways, if you guys like this video series, please go drop a thumbs up and comment down below if you want to see me throw more big swim baits, go after giant bass like this. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you strike out. This trip we got a couple, they weren't the right size we were after, but that's what keeps us coming back for more. I do have some exciting content coming from you guys. Tournament videos, local fishing's heating up. It's about to get really, really damn good. Thank you for watching this whole series and for watching this video. I seriously, genuinely appreciate your time and efforts. Catch you very soon. I'm out of here. Peace. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. I can't stop with a love like mine.